How's it going? This is Ben. I wanted to do a quick demonstration of texture coordinates in Blender Cycles, particularly the difference between generated texture coordinates and object texture coordinates. Uh, on some of the online tutorials that, I, that I've watched in the past, uh, the people teaching have not really understood the difference between these two. Who knows? Maybe I don't understand the difference between these two, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I, I really appreciate these tutorials that happen, um, and I'm not just talking about the really high-end ones like maybe Blender Guru or Blender Cookie, but just all the individuals who contribute. Blender's got a great, strong community, and I feel like this is one thing that sometimes gets missed, so I just want to help people understand this better. I'm going to change to Blender Cycles because we're going to do this in the Node Editor. I'm going to delete the default cube, and I'm going to go into the Node Editor. I'm going to add a plane, and uh, this plane we're going to make it, uh, we're going to use generated texture for it. So maybe what I'll do is I will just add a piece of text and call it generated. And I'll scale that down, move it over, move it up. And we're going to, well, let's uh, add a material to our plane. I'll make an additional window here. And this window, we're going to view it in cycles. That way we can see what's going on uh, with a decent amount of confidence. And in this window, we'll just look at it with the regular Blender viewport view. With our material applied, I can change the color and so forth. But we're going to add a texture because that's where the coordinates tend to matter. In fact, let's take a look at these coordinates right now. Texture coordinates, you see there are a number of them here. And this great new feature, uh, which is terrific that we have now have an object texture coordinate, but we're looking at this object texture coordinate, okay, the one right there, and we're going to look at the generated coordinate. Again, for this to work, you need to have a texture, so let's use the brick texture is a good one. And uh, unless, well, I guess we could, maybe we'll use the checker texture. It's a bit simpler than the brick texture. So let's apply that and uh, make these colors nice and different. Here we are, and instead of diffuse, I'm gonna press Shift S, which allows me to actually switch the type. I'm gonna change it to an emission so we can see it very, very clearly. And maybe generate it, I'll just give him a dark material so we can see him better. There we go. This material we're gonna call generated. All right, so if I apply the generated texture to this, it will do nothing. It makes it exactly how it was before. The reason for that, as I understand it, is because generated is the default texture coordinate type for, if not everything, nearly everything. If I were to apply normal, it does something weird. UV is going to do something weird. Object is going to look different. Camera is going to look different. Window, like you move around and it does weird stuff. Uh, reflection also, you move around, it does a different kind of weird stuff. So everything gives it something different, but generated, generated gives it exactly what it had in the first place, okay? I'm gonna select those two items, duplicate them, move them down, and instead of being generated, this one is going to now be object. I'll write that in just so we can keep track. I'll make a copy of this material, and we're gonna object map it. Now immediately you're gonna notice that it is smaller. Um, that's nothing to be alarmed. It's not that object is always smaller, but in this case, that's how it's coming up. What's important to note here is how these things change when the mesh is edited, okay? With a generated texture, okay, and these two on top of each other have the same texture, have the, I'm sorry, have the same material. With a generated texture, if I go into edit mode and take this outside vertex and slide it to the left, you're gonna notice the texture kind of stretches with it. See how it stretches out to the side? So now they're about twice as wide, but just the same amount of high, same amount of height. That's because when you're doing a generated texture, it creates something like a bounding box. And really it is a box, it's a cube that it draws around whatever object you're working with. In this case, I'm working with these four vertices and it draws a box that has an, emer an imaginary corner here that goes back and around. So as I stretch it out, that box itself has to stretch out along the X axis, it becomes a lot fatter. <clears throat> Likewise, if I move it in, once I pass this threshold, it's not going to shrink at all. You see that? 
The reason for that is because my box doesn't want to go past this vertex. It has to honor that. And so it maintains the shape of that regular um, square that we had in the first place. Okay. But if I were to take both of the vertices and move them in, now the whole thing starts to shrink. In fact, if I move them right side by side, it might be easier to see. It gets very, very skinny. It goes back more or less to where it was and stretches out. That's what goes on with generated. So there's this thing that stretches around it. Object coordinates, on the other hand, don't care about the mesh. It just doesn't care at all about the mesh. My mesh could be that. It could be that. It could go up or down. It could do like impossible shapes like that. Um, it's not going to change. It's just going to keep repeating itself to follow. Uh, it'll just keep repeating itself till it's filled up the mesh, basically. So that's an important difference between object and generated. Well, what does that mean? That means that the object mapping is interested in these things right here. Okay? It's interested in the location, the rotation, and particularly it's interested in the scale, at least in my brain. That's how it does it. Both of these, if I move them, both the generated and the object, you'll notice the texture moves with it. Okay, it's going to honor that. My suspicion is that generated honors that because uh, the bounding box stays with it. Although I guess rotating it stays with it as well. However, with the object coordinate, if I duplicate one and move them over here, okay, if I go into edit mode and scale them by, down by half, you'll notice that it doesn't actually scale down the shapes. Whereas in, gener whereas in generated mode, if I were to go into edit mode, scale this down by half, it shrinks with it, right? Also, interestingly, in generated mode, and stop me if I'm going too crazy here. Of course, you can't stop me. Um, if I go into edit mode and duplicate this, it's actually going to increase the width here because it's all one object and it draws a box around all those vertices. It's not interesting. I think it's interesting um, that that's what it does. And of course that's what it does, but it's not exactly what we'd expect it to do. We'd say, well, why don't you just make a copy of it? Well, because it's all, it's interested in the entire mesh and it draws a box around it. Objects on the other hand, here I've shrunk it down by half and it still has the same size as the one on the left. But now if I scale it up in object mode, not edit, that's edit mode. I'm in object mode. I'm going to scale it up by two. So now it's the same size. Now the texture is twice as large. And that's because of the scale parameter, because the scale is set to two. Whereas on my first object, the scaling is set to one. And interestingly, if I were to duplicate this, if I were to apply my scale, which you do by control A, apply and choose scale, what that'll do is it'll reset the scale to one and adjust the mesh accordingly so it doesn't actually look like it changes at all. But it does change. It changes in this object reading. So if I press control A and I apply the scale, it goes back to what it was before. And the scale has gone back to one. So that's the main difference between these two. Object is not interested in the mesh. It's interested in, largely, the scale of your object. One other thing to note, uh, just for fun, I'm going to scale this by 0.5 again and scale it up by 2, delete this one. So here I have these two. They're both scale at a scale of 4. I'm going to select this outer vertex and press Shift S, cursor to select it. And then I'm going to press Control Shift Option C for to reset the origin. I'm going to set the origin of this object to the 3D cursor. Now watch over here. Right now they're identical. We've got these thin things, pink, 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 pink. Right, it's the same. Origin to 3D cursor. Now look what's happened. It's actually moved, and it's moved in an intuitive way. If this is the origin right here in the middle, the origin here is right in the middle of this box. You'll see there's a pink box immediately to the lower left. And here there is a pink box immediately to the lower left of the origin. So it centers the texture at the location of the origin. And you, you can prove that real quick uh, in object mode. If you were to apply a, um, what do I want here? I want a gradient texture. And I'm going to set it to be spherical. Okay. I'm 
going to give that an object vector. And I'm going to use a math shader, math node, greater than, just to be able to demonstrate this. Here you can see my texture is just a circle. And you can see that it the set it centers itself on the new origin that I've made, which you can see by this little orange dot right here. That's where my origin is, whereas this one, the origin is in the middle. Even though they look the same and they have the same scale parameters, they have a different origin. And so the texture is originating or starting in a different spot. So uh, there you go. That's, um, that's our lesson today. The difference between object coordinates object texture coordinate and generated texture coordinate. Hopefully this helps you make sense of some of your projects uh, in the future and uh, have a great day.